today and on the U.S. future. We pray that uh, this is a part of my story will be short, but down to the point, and uh, it's glad to be here today. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, uh, my story, as she mentioned, Bonnie started in uh, 2014. Uh, I came from Texas to here to get help, and when I got here, I got deeper into drugs and alcohol, got on crack cocaine, got on the needle, and got to a place to where uh, it's either death or, or I'm going to get help, and I didn't know which one I wanted. But I was suicidal and hopeless, and I'll never forget pulling a suitcase down 45th Street, at 2 o'clock in the morning and nowhere to go in West Palm. And uh, I had two options, and one of them was to uh, not be here. Another option was to uh, pick up the phone and call the police for help. So I called the police, and the policeman came out and picked me up, uh, took me to a mental hospital in West Palm called Jerome Golden Center. And uh, I ended up getting in there at 3 o'clock in the morning on a on October 26, 2014, which is 10 years this month. Uh, and uh, so they uh, they took me in, uh, stayed in the mental hospital for a week, went to halfway house for two and a half months, and then I came to, I came to, uh, when I was in the halfway house, they told me about a, man, a guy named Jim Batmation that was down in Boca Raton, and that uh, they gave, he gave jobs. And, uh, and I, 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 was, I was now in a halfway house. Uh, I, I mean, I didn't want to sit around and do nothing. I wanted something to do. I've always worked my whole life, other than when I got real bad drugs and from 2011 to 2014. I just dropped out off the faith of the planet in Texas and was, was totally into drugs and, and alcohol and uh, the bad scene. But uh, so I came down, I met Jim at Hughes Park. Uh, uh, that's where changing my work at that time. And uh, so I, I asked for a job. He gave me a job. That's where I started my, my, my work and also he's been a mentor and uh, accountability and things like that and to grow. But uh, the journey for today, like I say, October 26, 2014, of this month will be 10 years of me being clean. So I've been a 10 year journey, and the journey has not been easy. And the journey has not been just sit around and do nothing, because that doesn't work. And I'm talking about, you know, I still work for you in that routine. I'll still be 10 years in December, Jim. I don't know if you knew that, but 10 years in December. And uh, so uh, my journey over the last 10 years, and even Jim said this at one time, he said, uh, he brought up Celebrate Recovery to me one day, and I had I hadn't even I don't I don't know if I'd even been to Celebrate Recovery meeting at that point. I started going to Celebrate Recovery meetings around here and really couldn't find it. And I was at one. This lady after she gave her testimony, I said, "Where do you go to Celebrate Recovery?" She said, "I go to Wilton Manor's Calvary Chapel." And so I started driving down there every every week for uh, seven years. Wilton Manor Celebrate Recovery. And I went and got my sponsor. Uh, and I'm going to tell you how I've done it. And I, I just want to tell my story. It doesn't mean it's everybody else's story, but how I've stayed off drugs and alcohol and the struggle I've had since I've been clean. So it's not that the struggle hasn't been there. There's always been a struggle. There's been four or five times that were crucial in my recovery where I, where I could have picked up again and used drugs and alcohol, but I didn't. I picked up the phone and called somebody. So when I started to celebrate recovery, They have a year-long program that you can sign up to go to. Them. So I decided to go to that program for a year of my life. Met every Sunday from one to three. And we went through these four books right here. These four books right here. These, each one of these books are three months long. And you have a facilitator, two facilitators, and you sit in that class and you go through that journey over a year program. And, uh, and you go every week and you go home and do your homework, you come back and you answer your questions, you build accountability with some of those groups. You have a sponsor on the outside that walks that journey with you. Uh, and so my sponsor has gotten out fortunate to have a guy named Glenn. And so I worked with Glenn that whole year. Phone calls, meetings, uh, going to the meetings every week to celebrate recovery. 
going through all four of these booklets over a year and put my whole life into this program as I worked for Jim. And so the recovery hasn't came easy. And I've had times where I've struggled with depression, with anxiety, with hopelessness, had to restore my family, having family that would talk to me for years. Jim spent, you know, in, in bringing my family back. Uh, Mr. Brad Magnuson was grateful enough to let my family come uh, here. And so I've restored, I mean, he helped pay to have them come here and uh, get them on planes to get them here and, and to fly me home. And I have, a, my son has been totally restored. We've had a six, seven year relationship. We talk almost every day now. He was gone from my life for six years. My oldest daughter, uh, which has four grandkids, we didn't see each other for 14 years because of my debacle in drugs and alcohol, me running away from life and going straight into drugs and alcohol. And uh, some of the things that cause that, I'm going to bring this out. I think it's uh, uh, that they, I think it's really important that people know part of the story. When I was uh, six years old, I got caught on fire on my stomach, and I was uh, in the hospital for three months or in bed for three months, and out of school for six months, and that changed my life forever. I had to have plastic surgery and a lot of things that happened, but going to school and stuff, I felt inadequate. And I always got in trouble, started smoking cigarettes, doing drugs in middle school, smoking marijuana, drinking, partying, and then when I got into high school, I got on the hard drugs. And I was shooting up crystal meth and doing a lot of different things. And so, so my story started really in my teenage years, but at nine years old, a tragic, a tragic event happened in my life. I got sexually abused by another man. And I never told anybody about it for 22 years. So you imagine growing up in school and feeling inadequate and having these traumatic experiences happen to you. Then I had a, a, a dear family member, not gonna mention her name, but a dear family member that got raped when she was 12 years old and got raped when she was 17. And that changed me forever. And uh, the two men went to prison. So there's events in our life and all of our lives that happen that can change the course of our life. And we can either choose to fall off the face of the earth, go to drugs, eventually it's either death, institution, or jail. Death, institutions, or jail. And, uh, or you can get clean. Or you can commit to a process. And the whole, the whole recovery is a long-term, lifelong process. It never ends. And if I ever stopped doing the things I've been doing, I would be back into drugs and alcohol immediately. I'd go back to that. So I've made a choice to work through my problems. I, I'm not 100%, I've still got issues I work with, my attitude at times, my, my uh, 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 a lot of things. But two things that I committed to that I would never change when I came to recovery was that I would, I would or really three, I would, I would go to church, that is a non-negotiable item, and that I go to celebrate recovery every week and never miss. And now I'm one of the leaders at Calvary Chapel, and we, I'm one of the training coaches there to train the new leaders. And so I've been doing that now for, just started doing that. We had our first training class uh, two weeks ago. So I'm, I'm the, me and another guy, the trainer for Calvary Chapel uh, Fort Lauderdale to uh, celebrate recovery. And uh, so, so I mean, I'm really involved in celebrate recovery. I go to about three different celebrate recoveries at different churches every week because Donald cannot make it without having other people in my life that can speak into my life. And another third thing is that I was gonna go to work every day and, uh, and, uh, and submit to my authority, which is Jim and other people in the company, and that I do the best I can. And, and, uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, and Jim, I'm saying that you have had a major impact in my life, you and your wife both. And I, I really appreciate it. And, uh, uh, and so... No, I just want to He said, I, he said I gave him a job. Okay. Um, you know, I felt sort of felt sorry for him. I gave him a job as a security guard. What is that? On a shopping center, just to watch out for you know, see if any vagrants are coming, any of you guys show up to throw you off, right? I believe you. But he started managing the shopping center. Took care of all the property management issues. Started doing leasing. Started figuring out who were the bad tenants who wasn't paying, who was good, who we should bring into the shopping center. And I said, wow, this is amazing. So why don't you take, Don, why don't you take over, you know, another property too? Wow, you're a real, you know, starting to be a leader. Well, you know, fast forward in the 10 years, 
He's now my senior maintenance, not maintenance, property manager. He has 38 men under him, okay? So he got in. Good for him, but I want him to be a, I want him to be a model for you guys, okay? So you get a job, you say, well, this is a stupid job. I'm making 12 bucks an hour. You know, I'm shoveling dirt or whatever. Use it as an opportunity, like Don, to be a leader, to learn, see what the business is, and see how you can get your own business and, and make it grow. Look, look what he did with AA. Goes to AA, like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm recovering, I'm going to AA. Now he's the freaking leader of AA. Yay, that's awesome. So you get into something, and then, you know, I bought a three-family house, you know, 50 years ago. I didn't know what I was doing. I, was, I just got it, I was going to school. I needed a place to live. But I turned that into a little business where I could make more rents than I was paying the bank. And I said, wow, this is pretty cool. And I'm, I'm walking to school and collecting rents and paying the bank and, and I'm making a profit every month. Isn't that amazing? That's Living amazing. For free and making a, I said, this is a business. So I said, let me do another one. And I've been doing another one for 54 years, okay? So I'm just, I'm just telling you guys, you start small, but grow big, okay? The other thing I want to tell you is it's really not that difficult. We provide two, mo two months of housing for you. Housing, I think we give them food, and I think, you know, you go to a class, right, I, I guess in the evening, um, and you, you, you can't drink and you can't drug. They might test you, but it's basically trying to transform your life. Call it a sober home if you want to call it that. It's an apartment building, okay? And you're living with all clean, sober, people, right? So we're gonna you take off the street, you go live there, we pay for it. Doesn't get much better than that, okay? It's not a jail, go out during the day, do whatever you wanna do, come back at night, have dinner, and so forth, okay? Um, and then once you get clean and sober and you feel good, then we start putting you into job and vocational program, reunite you with your family, we finance your car, and maybe you'll be managing 38 guys like Don Anderson and buying real estate like me. That's awesome. It's a process going up the ladder, but you gotta start somewhere and you gotta want to make it happen for you. We allow you to make this happen, to get off the street and to, to be another Donald Anderson or another Jim Batmazian if you wanna be. But you have gotta take that challenge and you have gotta start and start it today. Yay, that's awesome. Jim said, you have, you're sitting, sitting in chairs right now, a program called Changing Lives mm -hmm. that has a lot of resources. If you really want recovery and you really want to change it, get off the streets, if you've been homeless for a day, or for five years or 10 years, there is a place you can change. That's why it's called Changing Lives. You can change, but if you're gonna have to go to their office, you're gonna have to get set up, you have to be humble, you're gonna have to be able to receive, it's not me, me, me anymore. It's not really about me anymore. It's about other people. It's about seeing other people get changed. And I gotta, I wanna read a, uh, just a scripture in the Bible that, uh, that is, uh, there's just, uh, this, was, this was the start of my recovery, is coming back to the Lord. And, uh, and it says, uh, it says, in him, in whom you also trusted, talking about Jesus Christ, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession of the praise of his glory. So it says that when I believe in Jesus' death on the cross and his payment for my sins, I was filled with the Holy Spirit of promise and God gave me a new beginning. Now, did I change overnight? No. I'm still changing. But I guarantee if you look at me 10 years ago, with needle marks all over me, and you look at me today, it's not a bragging on me, and bragging on Jesus Christ and his ability to change. And then hoping that you can do that in hope. And uh, I have, uh, in Texas, I have uh, three kids, Four grand, uh, eight, uh, seven grandchildren. My son has a, is pregnant. His wife's pregnant with her first baby, uh, and she's 42 years old. And so I'd be my eighth grandchild. I knew none of those kids growing up 
None of my grandkids growing up, I was too selfish and self-centered and I was into drugs and alcohol. I knew them not at all. Now, I'll never, I'll never forget after being three years sober, my daughter finally decided to meet with me, a godly lady. She said, do you want to meet your grandchildren? Now, they're, 14, they're 15, 13, 10, and 7. Don't know them at all. Now, I'll never forget, and Jim, you flew me home that weekend, whether you remember, um, just letting you know. Uh, <laughs> I pulled up in the driveway, and they're all out looking out the window. And they're fixing to meet their grandfather for the first time. For the first time. And it, it broke my heart. It broke my heart. Because I've always loved my kids and I've always loved my grandkids. And, uh, and I didn't know them. And, I, and when I got clean, a lot of guilt, a lot of shame, a lot of all this junk that was on me because of my past. And I'll never forget going in and them coming outside and, and getting hugged from them all. And, and then spending a wonderful time. And then uh, they all flew out here to, uh, to uh, uh, Florida. And uh, Jim put them up. And my four grandkids for 10 days. For 10 days with my daughter, her husband, and four, and four grandkids. And now I've got a granddaughter that's almost 20 years old. So I've had some involvement in their life now. So, so these are the precious things that if you look back at your life, and look at where you are right now. I'm not judging anybody. What have you lost? Because of either drugs or homelessness or not willing to commit to the process. What do you have back there that you've lost? Let me tell you. God can do miracles like you've never seen before. And he can restore hope where there is no hope. He can restore things that look like they can never be restored. God is God of restoration. And he can bring hope back in my family. I got one daughter I still haven't been mended with, but it's coming soon. And uh, and so, and she has three grandkids. I, I don't know them, but I will soon. So I still have broken pieces that aren't fixed yet. And I'm just going to say this just over a, uh, uh, just read these items that are that are the the lessons of celebrate recovery. Like I said. Uh, uh, they're uh, the first three that you go through these lessons. The one of them is denial. How much time do I have left? Not much. Okay, you can give me about two or three minutes. Yeah, so I, I just want to talk about one. The first one that I had to come in contact with in the first lesson in Celebrate Recovery is the word called denial. And denial is not, hey, I, I don't see something in my life. Uh, that you have to tell me. That's part of now. You don't know something's there and somebody speaks into your life and gives you something. Hey, you need to look at this. Another part of denial is I, I got my family here. Got my whole life here. The company I lost for 28 years. I got all that here. And I'm looking back here and I'm moving off into drugs and alcohol. And I block out all that I used to do even my family. That's denial. I choose that path instead of what's right. And so... My challenge to you, and I'm going to say this just clear, start the process. I believe in the 12 steps. Go to Celebrate Recovery, go to AA, SA, uh, CA, whatever it is. Commit to the process. You cannot change without committing to the process. Like I said, church, uh, uh, Celebrate Recovery, and, and, and work. If those things aren't in line, Donald's not working the process. And talk to people about your hurts, habits, and hang-ups. Everything that you have in your life, you got to have a sponsor. A sponsor. Get involved in AA. Get involved in Celebrate Recovery. Get involved with a mentor or a sponsor or someone that can speak into your life and give you hope and healing. And speak the truth to you when it hurts. When it hurts. My sponsor. Last thing. I remember I almost fell off the cliff one day. I don't mean literally, but I almost fell off the cliff. And... And, uh, and I'll say ran off with a lady. I almost did that. This was years ago. Without him, I would have. And that lady was an alcoholic. I'd been drinking. I'd been back on crack. And I'd been back on drugs again. But it's a process you got to commit to. you got to be willing to say, I don't have it. I'm 20 years old. I'm 30 years old. I'm 40. I'm 50. I'm 60. And I'm still doing that same cycle over and over again. Something has to change. Guess what? you got to break into that cycle. you got to do something different. you got to commit to the process. 
and then God will come in in the middle of that process and begin to bring change. Thanks for letting me share.